That's it's a good awful lot in a day. <laughs> um, so I, I'll do what I can in one day. Um, and I think I'm a newcomer to Chelmsford, having been here for 41 years. Uh, and I, but I've been very privileged, really, to work in Chelmsford most of that time. So I'm mayor for a day, I'll call it Steel and Clay, and you'll see why in a minute. Um, Const uh, Chelmsford is constantly changing um, over the 40 years I've been here, uh, like many other places really, um, and over that time there's been some landmark schemes. Um, Parkway in 72 that did split the uh, town apart, but it wasn't completed in fact until 1987, um, and uh, at about the same time of course the Chelmsford bypass came in, so there's some of the changes. Then we had pedestrianisation of the high street 20 years ago, <coughs> And then from 1995, development of this site uh, from the former RHP uh, factory that was here. And we've had the two, um, we've had High Chelmer and of course the Meadows. Um, uh, Chelmsford is a, is a great place uh, to live, um, but it's not a tourist city. So what we need is a tick. What do I mean by that? I mean a tourist information centre. Uh, there used to be one, uh, they were, it was run by two dragons, you didn't really want to go in there, but uh, it did get better and then it disappeared. And if you're coming to Chelmsford, where do you go? Nothing there. So that is one thing I would make sure we have, Tourist Information Centre. Now, uh, also in Chelmsford we have many fine buildings, um, build over many decades, and there's a lot of Victorian buildings if you look around, um, but we do have a small but perfectly formed cathedral. I took that photograph yesterday. I had great fun uh, just taking some snaps in the last two days, and it was sunny, amazing, isn't it, after <laughs> Monday. Um, so we have, we have a cathedral, uh, probably not that well known, but we do. Um, then I've chosen Cater House. Um, <laughs> A wonderful monument to 60s and 70s, early 70s architecture. Opened in 1971, so obviously designed and built in the 60s. Now, a lot of 60s buildings are disappearing. Um, there's probably a risk that that will go. And that would be a great share. Oh dear. Why has your society to switch itself off? Right, so, uh, I was actually contacted by Sarah from the National Trust, because I'm uh, I've been a member of our National Trust group for a long time, and, uh, and that, that set me thinking. And, and um, so, what would I preserve? I thought, if I'm there for a day, there's artifacts up here that need preserving. And, and uh, you probably might be surprised, but the gas holder on the old gas works site. Now, I think uh, that is an amazing monument and, and, and an attractive uh, icon. You may not agree with me, but I, there's also an interesting story here that a friend of mine wrote up in Gas Times of the building of the gas holder. So we've got technology here hidden away that only if people manage to explore these things can find. Right, okay. So I'm going to just read, read, read an article uh, that my friend wrote, uh, an abridged version of it. The Chelmsford Municipal Undertaking awarded a contract for the construction of a 1 million cubic feet capacity gas holder at the beginning of 1945. Foundation failure occurred on completion, and it is interesting to compare the low-key reporting of this, of this to the councillors with the soil mechanics research that was initiated as a result. Ah, well, right. Good. So, here we go. So there it is. That is taken. Tesco's just to my left. Quite a. We don't need the two. I know what. <laughs> Big thing on my feet. Right. Okay. So, so construction of the foundation started in in 1945, and progress was rather slow. Uh, for all sorts of reasons, I mean, shortage of material. So, <coughs> the contractor of the works. Uh, well, now what happened was um, it, they had problems with settlement. They, they, the, 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 cap, the gas holder started to uh, fail. It's the one on the right, I believe. Um, and uh, the contractor for the work seemed to have considered the matter more seriously 
than the councils, well not the councils, but the, the borough employers. And he commissioned the building research station to investigate. And the results of the investigation were reported by Gigi Mayerhoff to the South Wales Institute, goodness knows why he went to the South Wales Institute, of Engineers in 1951. Now Mayerhoff actually was, was born in um, Kiel in 1919, so he was about 35 at the time. In contrast to the slight nature of the problem reported to members of Chelmsford Council's uh, Chelmsford Council, Mayerhoff's paper says the large differential settlement developed with serious interfaces with workings of the plant, because of course this place was generating gas at the time, and the failure led to important research on plastic flow beneath foundations and on the ultimate bearing capacity of the clay layers. The result of this research resulted in the classic design methods for foundations on thin clays still used today. So, Chelmsford is important in, in, in for Mayerhoff's work. So, the, the site is important then for the visual impact and sculptural beauty of the gas holder. <laughs> and the scientific work carried out here 63 years ago on the foundations, and which are still and the work is still relevant today. And then Peter Winart or says in his write-up, was the wartime approach of centering bad news still in operation? So they, they really kept it very quiet about just how bad this failure was. Or if you are cynical, were the officers trying to conceal a cock up? Uh, and that is an interesting uh, philosophical debate. And there we are. Thank you for listening.